Freetown, in the heart of the capital city, Freetown. You're watching and listening to FTN's 3 p.m. top news on channel 35 and simulcast on Freetown Radio on FM 90.4. I am Justice Victor Jones. In this edition of FTN's 3 p.m. top hard news, we've got, as usual, stories making news within and around the country. All are waiting to be given out. We begin with our very first story. The Legislative Committee in the House of Parliament has on Wednesday paid a courtesy call on representatives of some civil society organizations and the media in order to strengthen the monitorial role on service delivery in the country. This, according to the committee, is to allow members of parliament to do proper vetting and analysis of the 2019 budget. Let's have a highlight of how it all went. African Continental Free Trade is an agreement amongst 55 African Union countries to which Sierra Leone is a member. The agreement is the largest trade fair area since the formation of World Trade Union. This is to ensure there is bilateral trade relations between Sierra Leone and her members. In relation to this, the Ministry of Trade and Industry has laid on the table of Parliament an agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade. Peter Bayuku Conte is the Minister of Trade and Industry. So, Parliament, that some of these things Parliament condone with civil society and the media, is now you are doing it. Because if, for example, when you started discussing your wage bill, civil society and the media was brought in this committee room to discuss, to back you up, try to get the public interest around you, most of the bashing you are getting today, you will not get it. However, I think honorable members of parliament, with all due respect, have learned a very good lesson that partnering with civil society, who are the two voice, you are the representative and we are the voice. So both the representative and the voice, when they come together, we can create the required impact. When it comes to the way they, for us at service delivery, we have been working around, advocating around issues that has to do with way bill in this country, not today. But as one of my colleagues said, if Parliament and civil society and the media take up the issue of the way bill today, looking at the background of where we are coming from regarding your way bill, we will not have the public support. The executive will think that uh, because they have refused, the executive have got the public interest to refuse some of the proposals put forward by Parliament regarding its conditions of service. That is why we are also civil society and Parliament have joined together to reduce the conditions of service of uh, the executive arm of government. That would be like a setup. We have a few uh, things we want to lay to you. Point number one is meet again with civil society outside camera so that we can sit with you, the committee, and draw up a map regarding the approach we are supposed to use in targeting the way bill. That's point number one. Point number two, we want to advise that you discuss the budget, the 2019 budget, thoroughly at the end of the budget discussion and when the flyer of all what has been happening around the House of Parliament over the past week will be died down, then we can come back and say, okay, the functionality of Parliament for me, I always say, if we have an effective and efficient Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, we don't need the Anti-Corruption Commission. We don't need the audit service. We don't need them. Because we, 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 parliaments have enormous powers to ensure that effective and efficient service delivery is realized in this country. So we want to appeal with you, all the members, you have legitimate concern. For us in service delivery, we also have legitimate concern because we have directors who are sitting, boys are doing their work, all their job is to sign paper, they receive 70 million. So it has been a concern to us all. But as we said, the timing is wrong. The executive will think that it's a setup. The executive will think that parliaments have gone up against them using the provisions in the constitution. Parliament of Sierra Leone has on Wednesday, 7th November 2018, ratified a bill laid on the table of Parliament by Minister of Trade and Industry Peter Bayoko Conte. FTN's Lukule Moses K was at the Well of Parliament and now reports. African Continental Free Trade is an agreement amongst 55 African Union countries to which Sierra Leone is a member. The agreement is the largest trade fair area since the formation of World Trade Union. This is to ensure there is bilateral trade relations between Sierra Leone and her members. In relation to this, the Ministry of Trade and Industry has laid on the table of Parliament an agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade. Peter Bayiku Conte is the Minister of Trade and Industry. 
What we are witnessing today, the ratification of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, is the key to the creation of one African market, which will change the dynamics of the African continent. Mr. Speaker, this agreement does not only symbolize our progress towards the ideal of African unity, but it's an agreement about trade in goods and services, about African workers adding value in Africa, about services offered by African professionals using the latest technologies. Mr. Speaker, the African continental free trade area will cover an African market of 1.2 billion people and a gross domestic product of $2.5 trillion across all 55 member states of the African Union. The debate was not as heated as compared to last week. A bit of sanity and triguality was observed in the world of parliament. Voices were read in unison, all geared towards the ratification of the World Trade Union Agreement. Consequently, all later made meaningful contributions toward the enactment of the bill which table at the House of Parliament. It is an important aspect of the transformation of the African Union, African Organization for African Unity to the African Union to move from purely a political organization to one that is fostering economic transformation and development across the continent. This, is, this document is an important pillar of that transition. It came up as a topical topic in the EU Parliament, to which I am a member, running countries from the ACP, and in Europe, they all came together that getting a bilateral agreement in trade we go a long way to boost the As Sierra Leone joins other countries around the world to commemorate World Poppy Day, the Ministry of Defense, in collaboration with the Sierra Leone Ex-Servicemen's Association and the National Remembrance Day Planning Committee, has remembered the courage and self-sacrifice of those who suffered in wars in order to establish and maintain peace. The co-chairman National Remembrance Day Planning Committee, Commissioner Rashid Thomas II, explains the significance of the day to FTN's intern reporter, Mabinti Suma. Well, from the word Remembrance Day, uh, it comes from the, the verb to remember, and we remember those soldiers who fell during the First and Second World Wars. This day is put aside to remember them because it was on that particular day, the 11th of November, on the 11th hour, 11 o'clock in the morning, on the 11th day of the 11th month, that's November, 1945, that's the Treaty for Peace was signed to stop hostilities to end the war. So this day is significant. So every year on the 11th, countries of the world, especially Commonwealth countries, hold this as a significant event. It requires long planning. And by tradition, this committee Remember the planning committee plans the program. It's in two folds. We see the Friday to the Sunday, 11th. If the 11th falls on weekend days, uh, we take the Sunday nearest to the 11th. First, we have what we call the ceremony of the planting of the crosses. This is uh, to besmear the activities 
that took place on Flanders Field. Flanders Field was the battlefield in France where thousands of soldiers died and they were buried on Flanders Field. So every year the survivors of the deceased soldiers they go to Flanders Field and they plant crosses on the graves of fallen heroes and heroines. After a period of time, red poppy flowers just burst out along the rows of um, the crosses. And these flowers are called the remembrance flowers. They are called poppy, red poppies. And to commemorate the end of hostility, it's been uh, designed artificially, as you see, I'm pinning up a red poppy. Shuriel is joining us. This is FTN's 3 p.m. top news on Channel 35 and on Freetown Radio 90.4. I am Eustace Victor Jones. We continue with more stories this afternoon. Orange Sierra Leone Limited, in partnership with the Freetown City Council, has yesterday, 7th November, launched the pay local tax with Orange Money at the Orange Office building at Rodden Street in Freetown. FTN's Moses J. Leverley was at the launching and now reports. Orange Sierra Leone Limited, one of Sierra Leone's leading mobile networks, which was established a few years back, has been in support with the government and other institutions as part of their corporate responsibilities. A few months back, they supported the Freetown City Council towards the national cleaning exercise and in continued partnership with Freetown City Council has launched pay local tax with orange money using either smart or non-smartphones. Medellin Samara, the Chief Executive Officer, Orange Money, has more. As many of you are aware, Orange Money is a leading mobile service provider in Sierra Leone with footprints across the nation. Having a base of 1.4 million customers and over 4,200 agents. Over 30% of our customers and agents are based in Freetown, which is a good opportunity for Freetown City Council to leverage all this space. The vision of our journey is to make Sierra Leone a cashless environment, and this vision resonates with the mayor's vision to transform Freetown into a smart city. Orange Money is a very convenient service that enables individuals, businesses and institutions conduct financial transactions seamlessly from the comfort of their homes, offices and business places through their mobile wallet. Elari Lajaku Williams, SCM Director, also gave additional words on some of the contributions of Orange towards development goals of Freetown. These programs will support one of the main revenue streams of the Freetown City Council. For us in Orange, we consider this occasion to be very important as it will mark another milestone between the two institutions. So to the members of the Freetown City Council, we want to say, just be rest assured, you are in safe hands. And the revenue generation that will come via local tax collection is safe with orange money Sierra Leone. Expressing appreciation, the mayoress, Yvonne Akisoya, firstly went through the procedure on how to purchase local tax using the orange money and also encouraged citizens to buy their local tax monthly in order to support the Freetown City Council. People often forget the relationship between the payment of tax and the delivery of the services that we all expect to get from the council. The council doesn't work on air. Much as we'd like to, we actually need to pay for things to get done. And where does the money come from? It comes from all of us. And how is it received? Through the payment of our taxes. So what we've done today is taken us all one step closer to being able to see a transform Freetown because it just made it easier 
for all of us to pay for that to happen. And where we are today is excellent. You know, I've paid my tax about four times now because I just keep testing before I <laughs> What Eunice had demonstrated just now is the fact that, yes, the charge is 5,000 euros. But if you're in a position to do more, then do more. Because we can assure you at Free Health City Council, your money will go to good use. FTN Stop News, Moses J. Valley Jr. Junior doctors across the country have on Monday, 5th November 2018, organized a peaceful sit back from work action, which should see to an increment in their salaries and other conditions of service in the medical sector. The sector, according to local doctors, is strangled by so many ill factors, which by extension have the potency to drastically reduce the professional tenets of young doctors in the administration of their medical charge. FTN's intern reporter Ruth Samakaba spoke with a representative from the Junior Doctors Association, Ali K. Gembe, in this interview. Me and the, and, the, and the likes. So, in that situation, and uh, that will end up incapacitated within the next uh, uh, say few years. So, I need to be assured that uh, there is a system that is going to take care of me. There should be like risk allowance and medical insurance, all this, those, those things. These are some of. We, it's more like um, um, all we want to in July this year, uh, the twentieth and the twenty fourth, we held a first general assembly as 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 an association, in which we invited authorities concerned for us to go and sit down and deliberate and look at and when we we did our report the report came out with resolutions and recommendations and alighting all these problems those reports and uh and deliver the reports to their various offices but no action was not a, no action was taken yeah are they taking any action based on the recommendations of the reports, then we wouldn't have been here. We saw the budget and um, like I said, that's those recommendations, recommendations and acted on them. And that will have reflected in, in, in that budget. So and again to the public we want to and um, we want we want to want to appeal to you that um, and um, we this 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 step that we are taking is not just about us it's about the good of county and good of every at some point in our life we want things to get better we want that's why we are calling on the relevant authority by looking at our concerns they will that will help to change the face of our health able one that will attract other people from other nations to come to Sierra Leone and we want to start running out and our citizens to neighboring countries and now people are even living for Liberia can you imagine so it says we need to move forward as a nation we need to do that very fast and um, the ultimatum is with global standards one in which uh, and we want to start seeing people coming to Sierra Leone to seek health care rather than we doing the inverse. Timing and we believe and um, this is the well time because we've engaged this thing did not start today. We we've we've engaged um, um, and on several occasions and the relevant authorities and um, this this engagement has started since way back and post Ebola period that um, uh, so to speak in late 2015 or so and um, we've continued those engagements in date and even as, as um, early as um, last, last week Friday we were at the minister's office, the minister of health and sanitation and the executive we met with him and we spoke lengthily on these issues and um, because we realized that we are not making any headway that's why we decided to take this action we did not as an executive just decided to take the action but it's a collective um, 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 decision from the entire membership and yes that's what we doing and um, we want to apologize 
On Friday, 2nd November 2018, the Minister of Finance, Jacob Jusu Safar, delivered the government's budget and the statement of economic and financial policies for the financial year of 2019 in the Chamber of Parliament. In his speech, the minister said the government will monitor the bill of domestic debt to ensure that it is within a suitable and affordable limit. FTN's intern reporter Ivan Fayamatore has more. To reduce material liabilities, government will also explore all balance sheet financing models that are non debt creative, including public private partnership and bid of greater transfer models. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, given the great availability of private capital for financing public sector projects, it is imperative that we are prepared to assess such capital with every time. Thus, government will support for the development partner with strengthening the capacity of relevant MBAs to conduct technical, economic, financial analysis of projects, as well as negotiate and manage contracts. This will reduce the risk of liabilities to government as its far and its far reaching debt implications. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, Government will carefully monitor the build-up of domestic debt to ensure that it is within sustainable and affordable limits. Government will also issue million to long-term bonds to finance infrastructure projects within available program borrowing limits to avoid the mismatch in utilizing short-term borrowing. This will lower refinancing and lower our risk inherent in domestic debt portfolio. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, Spent attention will pay to the clearance of refer areas owned to suppliers and contractors carried over from the previous administration. The current stock of areas is being audited to ascertain the accuracy and validity of the claims. The audit process will also determine whether the transactions are conducted within the law. Once the audit is completed, government will pay the verify areas in the short to middle term. The 2019 budget makes an explicit provision for the clearance of the verify area. Any excess revenue collected over the above target will partly use to pay the area. <coughs> to ensure prompt payment, government will negotiate and apply discount on verified claims based on certain criteria and will make upfront payment to creditors that are willing to participate. Government is also considering the securitization of areas, especially large claims related to roads and energy projects. The owners of the security will use them as guarantees to access finance elsewhere while allowing government to delay payment until such a time when the fiscal situation improves. Government is seeking technical assistance with the IMM and for the management of domestic debt in good area, fiscal oversight, and state of state owned enterprise. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, as I like in the fiscal strategy statement, the operation of state owned enterprise and inherent continuing liability constitute a major fiscal risk that will derail the implementation of the budget. Well, that's all we could offer to you on this edition of FTN's 3PM Top News. And as always, we would like to receive your comments or feedbacks on any of our news stories or suggestions on any of our programs. Do send them to our Facebook page at FTN News or by email to freetowntvnetwork at gmail.com. You could also follow us on our Twitter page or by text messages on the number plus 232-7827052. Watch FTN TV live on Lime from anywhere in the world. You could also keep up with this program and all other F10 programs on Limey. Download the Limey application from Google Play or App Store and be a part of the ever-continuing interconnectedness and global digitalization. And you'll never miss a moment. I have been Eustace Victor Jones saying bye for now.